Hey guys, we're back. Welcome to my Roanoke Breakdown. Greg and Ryan here, and we're finally jumping in to season six. I got my wish. Now we're going to do this quick. So we're going to do two episodes a week. Uh, so if you haven't seen these yet, what are you doing? Go watch them on Netflix or Hulu, and then come on back here. Spoilers ahead. Now, let's start first with the Roanoke Colony, guys. Now, obviously, this was mentioned back in Season 1 in Murder House. Um, fun fact, this was actually, the idea of Roanoke was actually uh, the original idea for Season 1. Obviously, um, Season 1 uh, was all about the Murder House, but then, uh, you know, Ryan Murphy came back to this for Season 6. So, obviously, a perfect setting for American Horror Story. Now, the Roanoke Colony itself is actually based on real-life events believe it or not. The colony is also known as the Lost Colony uh, from 1587, led by John White, that completely disappeared out of thin air. It's unexplained to this day. Um, approximately 112, 120 colonists just vanished, uh, leaving the word crow and the word Croatoan carved into some wood which would, might be a reference to some of the local Native Americans in the area. Now, some speculate that the colonists actually assimilated with some of the nearby locals uh, in the area, maybe even uh, moving to an island nearby. Um, but others believe that they were um, completely wiped out and massacred. Basically, a, a lot of their belongings were still left behind in the colony itself. So there's a lot of like an unsolved mystery in the highest degree here going on. Ooh. Now, this season isn't considered a, a highlight, at least in the AHS universe with a lot of its fans, even though it was critically hailed. Uh, a lot of, uh, it got great reviews. Uh, unfortunately, I think a lot of this has to do with the uh, marketing push that was uh, given out by FX uh, prior to the season premiere, uh, where they just dumped, uh, for whatever reason, uh, hundreds <laughs> just it felt like it hundreds. felt like hundreds <laughs> of ads uh, predicting different seasons uh, to get you yeah. enticed on the show that's good you're gonna get a lot of viewers for your first episode unfortunately a lot of them are gonna be pissed off after they watch the first episode so they're throwing things out there like what lock uh, like uh, Loch Ness monsters aliens uh, the witches too so fans are thinking oh my god coven again or you know we're gonna finally get you know the uh, something on a cruise ship all of these things so you have all these fans coming into the season premiere only to be disappointed um now had they done this for something like a season like a slasher season like they did for 1984 uh, people probably would have been a little bit happier but they did it and they saved this kind of marketing push for a mockumentary season not wise 100% agree with you, Greg. Um, also, fun fact about Rono Colony, it's also been covered by uh, the show Supernatural and uh, the Stephen King miniseries Storm of the Century. So Roanoke's nothing new, but it, it provides a perfect kind of setting and environment for a horror story season like we get here. Absolutely. All right, let's start off in chapter one. Now, obviously, this is a little different from what we've seen in past seasons and future seasons of the show. This is interview testimonials mixed in with some dramatic reenactments. Yes. Um, now, with that said, you're going to see a lot of heavy, influential references between uh, Amityville Horror, uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Hills of Eyes, uh, X-Files Home. I'm going to bring that up a lot here in this season. Mm -hmm. But the biggest one, of course, has to be the series Paranormal uh, Survivor. Now, that show focused on people's paranormal uh, experiences uh, where they lived in, you know, spooky houses, like, uh, uh, like motels, wherever, uh, and they were reenacted uh, for audiences. Uh, now, it reminds me a lot when I was a kid, I watched the show Rescue 911. It's a lot like that. So this is when we meet Shelby and Matt Miller. Uh, they are being interviewed for a new show called My Roanoke Nightmare. It's taking us through their experiences at the house and, and how they moved there and everything like that and what they dealt with. Um, so you have the actors, uh, you know, being interviewed and telling their story. And then we see kind of cutaway. We get to see some of like what actually happened uh, in, in a, a dramatic reenactment. So they start off in L.A. Um, they get horribly attacked by this in this gang initiation. Matt gets punched in the face, uh, completely didn't know it was coming. Um, and basically, uh, you know, almost dies. Uh, he's in a coma. Um, they're worried for their lives. And they're kind of basically like, let's get the hell away from L.A. <laughs> let's move somewhere a little yes. bit more simple. Let's move to the country, uh, and they go to North Carolina. Now, the cast is Lily Rabe, stars as uh, the real Shelby, while Sarah Paulson plays the actress uh, in the reenactments, and uh, Shelby's husband, Matt, is played by Andre Holland, uh, who you know from Castle Rock and The Nick, and, uh, of course, Moonlight. 
And of course, Cuba Gooding Jr. plays the reenacted version. <laughs> So it's, it, it might be a little bit confusing off the top if you're like, who are all these people? Yes. But once you get the idea and the and, and the theme that they're going with here, uh, you know, you have duplicates of every person. There's kind of, they're showing, you know, the real life people and then they're kind of mixing it into uh, the actors that are portraying them. So a little meta commentary on, you know, the, the, the popularity of reality TV and reenactment TV. Um, but it, I think it works really well once you understand and, and get... Mm -hmm you know, you get what's going on here. I was watching this with my wife and she was like, wait, wait, are this, that's a different girl. You know, that's a different guy. What's going on here? And I'm like, oh no, they're reenacting what they're telling us in the interview. So once you get that, then it's 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 cake. Yeah, Ryan, I know you're not a big fan of this season, but I promise you, I hope by the end, I am going to prove to you and America that this season is not trash. That was the worst night of our lives. Now, before we go to North Carolina, let's look back at LA really quickly at Matt's attack. Uh, he's there in front of the Orpheum Theater, uh, and mm -hmm. look what's playing at the theater. It is called Crimson Harvest. Now, if that's not foreshadowing, Greg, I don't know what is. <laughs> uh, you know, we know later that the Blood Moon comes and then the colony comes mm -hmm. up and starts killing people and taking their souls and just just murdering a whole bunch of people. So, Crimson Harvest sounds like the perfect foreshadowing for what's about to happen later on in the season. That or it's a shout out to Murder, She Wrote because it was an episode title. <laughs> yes. That's that's it. <laughs> now, Shelby and Matt uh, happen to find the Roanoke house after just stumbling upon it, uh, walking through the woods, you know, just, you know, having a having a nice, you know, time out walking through these creepy woods, apparently. <laughs> and they find an auction sign next to the house. So I'm like, sure. Let's buy it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was hysterical, Greg, because then, uh, you know, they cut to the auction, the actual auction, and it's just Matt and Shelby, uh, the guy who's auctioning off the house, and like one other redneck family there. Mm -hmm. No one else is there. Clearly, it's not a popular auction. No one wants the damn house. The starting bid for the house was 21 k uh, Eventually, they end up outbidding the, uh, the the locals next next door, neighboring uh, family. Uh, yeah. And they and they buy the house for 40k, Greg. That is a steal for any house, obviously. Um, but something has to be wrong when you're only spending Ooh. that much money for this house, and there's no one else. Kind of, you know, there's no competition for the house. Yep. And also Chas Bono uh, sighting, as you can see, he's there as uh, Lot Polk. Those are the Polks, um, and they're pissed. <laughs> Now, immediately they move in and all the weird stuff starts happening as as it would in a mysteriously haunted house. Of course. Um, you know, weird noises at night, uh, what tipped over the, the, the trash. They think it's a, you know, Matt thinks it's a bear, couldn't possibly be a bear. Um, but, you know, Greg, it gets really, really scary and horrifying immediately when it starts raining teeth, when Shelby's left alone at the house and she's... Mm. She imagines that, I mean, she, she sees teeth like falling down, like as, as if it's hail. Um, you know, yep. Matt comes home yep. and then she, there's there's nothing on the ground. It, it mysteriously disappeared. So, you know, Matt's kind of like, uh, what's what's wrong with you? Is it all in your head? And she, you know, it looks obvious to her that like this actually happened. But um, as soon as you see raining teeth, like that's when you might just like get the hell out of the house, right? You in danger, girl. But at the same time, it works. And the, the structure of this works because, again, uh, if you're dreaming or something, too, about your teeth falling out, I can see this happening where she thought she might have just been seeing things or she's probably dreaming. Yeah. Um, yeah. Even though she does pick it up with her, her hand and there's nothing out there, I would just chalk it up to a dream. I don't know if I'm ready to bail just yet. But because this, you know, falling out, teeth falling out of your mouth, stuff like that, that happens in your dreams and it can yeah. deal with your psychosis. So uh, you can chalk that up to maybe something weird's happening, but probably not time the bail just yet. OK, so Greg is staying at the house, guys, and I'm going to leave. This is just let's put that on the record. OK, OK. I, first of all, I wouldn't have moved there in the in the first place. But still, uh, if, <laughs> if, if I have the place and we threw the money down, yeah. uh, raining teeth is on the scale of like one to 10, it's about a seven. <laughs> okay, good to know. <laughs> I can always cancel my trip. I'm a big girl. I'm gonna be fine. Now Matt heads out on a work trip. Shelby's left all alone in the house, in this creepy house. Um, and this is when she starts to see stuff, of course, and as you would. Uh, we see the two nurses who we'll get to later on in this season. Um, and then from there, she takes uh, what would you do, Ryan? At this point, at this moment, what would you do? 
go in the hot tub. Shelby, what are you thinking? You go to the hot tub, uh, middle of the night, it's dark, uh, it's creepy, <laughs> you're, you're in a new house. Mm-hmm. You already have these weird vibes that you're feeling before before this night. Your husband left for the for a work trip. You in danger, girl. You don't know anybody in the state of of North Carolina. Like I don't know that that's that's sketchy. I if I was there, don't let anyone come in at all. And just you just just or just you know what I was actually Ugh. just jump into the bed and just put the covers over my head. Well, she didn't listen to you, Ryan, as she is uh, thrown underwater. She's uh, Someone's trying to drown her. And then it just cuts straight to Matt trying to head back to that house immediately that night as the police are there. And, of course, no one's there. There's no one around. Uh, there's no nothing, uh, to, nothing for the police to go with at this moment, even though it doesn't look like they were going to do anything in the first place, uh, as they chalk up the Polk family to this whole entire thing at the moment. Just from the jump, we hear the Polk family's name. Yeah, the obvious, uh, you know, uh, answer here is that it's the people that are pissed off that you took the house. You know, they're not going to go to spirits or the place is haunted. Um, but, you know, we, we see it's a very, very good sequence in terms of on a horror level because, like, you see um, flashes of characters that we're going to meet later on in the season um, during this whole sequence when she's getting submerged in the water. I mean, it was really, really horrifying. I, I uh, it's scary as hell. Um, but then you kind of get the dynamic of like they're newcomers to this whole neighborhood, right? Um, mixed in with uh, the the feelings of animosity that the neighbors might have towards them. The cops are kind of like, you guys are crazy. There's no evidence of anything here. Um, so they're like completely unhelpful. And you just kind of feel bad for the poor couple that are kind of like new to the neighborhood and getting completely traumatized. Yeah, and it's it's well written and it plays right into the tropes of uh, a lot of horror films like this, including like The Hills Have Eyes. So you don't know whether you you can trust these cops in the first place and the sheriffs because they may be working for the family. At this point, if you're watching this episode fresh and you've seen all these horror films, you're probably thinking that the cops are just probably working for the Polks or that cop may just be a Polk. Let me uh, go have a talk with him. Those guys keep to themselves and they're uh, not so easy to find. We need protection. Get a gun. Now, the weird stuff escalates even further. Um, One night, uh, Matt goes outside and finds a dead pig on his doorstep. Um, A nice gift from the Polk family, huh? Oh. Uh, At at this point, it's like, you know, you want to go to the authorities, the cops that that we saw earlier, but, um, you know, no one trusts you. I mean, here's some physical evidence of someone kind of messing with you and your wife, but, like, no one, there's no, uh, you know, no one's going to expedite any help or, like, really look into it. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you're wondering, okay, he doesn't want to tell, he's conflicted, he doesn't want to tell Shelby, He because if he calls the police and and Shelby's going to see it, then she'll freak out and maybe not want to stay there anymore, which they probably shouldn't at this point. Um, And then, but the police also tell him later, you should probably get a gun, which, at the same time, they probably should have at... uh, I don't know why they didn't do that too. So other than getting a gun, Matt thinks, oh wait, my sister's a cop. Let's invite her over here. Yeah, this is when things get even more interesting. Um, we get a little backstory on Lee, uh, played by Angela Bassett. Um, and in, in real life, Lee is actually played by Adina Porter. Um, and, and we get some backstory on her life. Uh, you know, now she's a former cop. She was a cop, she had a pill problem. Um, she went through some hard times. And um, she got uh, let go from the from the police force, um, and then she uh, obviously had some marital problems. Uh, her husband uh, took um, full custody of their child, Flora. Um, um, so she's like, you know, not in, not doing the best right now, but she is someone that Matt obviously trusts and wants to have there at the house to make, um, you know, his his wife like feel much more secure in where they are in the new in the new place. Now the problem here, though, which I found pretty confusing, is that. Uh, Shelby and Lee have a horrible relationship. Yeah, they have a horrible relationship. So, Greg, if you know that your sister has a horrible relationship with your partner, like, I mean, it's it's weird to kind of t- t- team them up and have them hang out while you're, like, on your work trips. Yep. They said, okay, bye. You guys are, you'll be cool together later in this haunted house. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All I could think of is like you're adding more trauma and stress yeah. and like just uneasy feeling to the whole situation that you know is already really, really fragile uh, for what like what we've seen your wife go through. So it was a very a questionable decision on Matt's part. Pouring that gasoline on the dynamite. While I'm here, could you please not drink inside the house? I know it's your home, but I'm hanging on to my sobriety by my teeth here. 
Now, fun fact, Angela Bassett is playing Cuba Gooding Jr.'s sister. Now, 25 years prior, she was playing his mother in Boys in the Hood. Angela Bassett does not age, and that's amazing. Yeah, I seriously. Approve. Get her blood. <laughs> Consensually. <laughs> Greg's a vampire. <laughs> I'm watching True Blood, but get, get her blood consensually. Now, Matt's gone again. Lee and Shelby are left in the house. And again, we brought up that Lee has a, a addiction problem. Uh, so she thinks Shelby is tempting her as we see a bottle of wine rolled down the hallway. So they get in an yeah. argument. And while they're getting into this argument, we find out that, you know, Matt left uh, cameras all around the house. And he gets an alert, looks at it. And then what do you see? People with pitchforks coming up to the front door they're all around the house and he's freaking out he's trying to get he's getting the hell out of there he's driving right back meanwhile we and shelby figure out that someone's there so they head straight downstairs to the basement where they find a you know a tv playing a videotape that looks like something out of the blair witch project and we're gonna say blair witch project a lot here because yes. there are many 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 references to that film i knew it was real why would someone break into my house just to play a home movie yeah, seriously. I mean, how many horror films uh, uh, do you see someone walk into a room where a TV is already on and it's playing something, <laughs> some some crazy spotty footage? Um, it, it, it was perfect here, obviously. And then, like, I mean, what's more what's more scary than like being away from home for Matt, being away from home and seeing the motion detection go off and like you can't get there in time to save your wife and sister who are being surrounded by people with to torches around the house in your new neighborhood? I mean. This is uh, uh, some really great horror um, in the in the very it first is. episode here, um, and then Shelby and uh, and Lee get some insight into you know what is kind of going on here. Uh, you know, obviously they don't know what this video is. They're they're watching it, and it's kind of like, is this a setup? Did someone make this? You know, we you and I could put together a, a scary video to scare um, some some people out of our homes as well if we wanted to. But you know, you don't know who. What, if it's if you should take it, you know, like as a, as a mm -hmm. true story, as what this is, is that, or a, a complete fra fabrication. So, um, you know, it, it's done expertly how how they how they put it together in that Blair Witch style and with um, uh, Dennis O'Hare as this uh, this professor and basically kind of just uh, talking through what uh, what he's experiencing and basically a, a, a kind of some spotty footage of. Piggy Man, who, who, we see, who we meet later in the season, um, but just uh, expert level of horror right here. Now, speaking of Blair Witch, when uh, everyone goes back upstairs, uh, you can see these like uh, Blair Witch-like totems all floating around the house, hanging uh, from the ceiling. How the hell they got them all up there? Magic. That's some um, freaky stuff. So creepy. And at this point, time to get the hell out. Cue Eddie Murphy. <laughs> Too bad we can't stay, baby. We gotta go. We gotta go at this point. I don't care what anyone says, but of course, this is the first episode. They can't leave just yet. So Matt's got to step up and say, whoa, whoa, whoa. We put too much money into this place. We gotta yeah. stay. And then Lee says the, the line that I thought, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening where she just says this. You gotta let the cops do their job. Oh, don't oh. take this personally. When someone says that in any movie or TV show, everybody's gonna die yeah everybody Everybody's at there. some point everyone's getting taken out <laughs> especially in american horror story greg when we know the cops mm -hmm. are just uh complete idiot bumbling idiots uh season th every season that we watch the show um yep. and, and these guys are no different they're not gonna um give uh any special preference to the new neighbors that moved in they probably have some um weird feelings and thoughts in uh and uh, prejudices against uh, not only an interracial couple, couple, which is alluded to later, but also people mm -hmm. coming from California, from Southern California, LA, uh, moving in new, new people in the neighborhood and basically causing concern and, and, and freaking out other people yeah. by, their, by you know, their constant calls. Yeah. Um, they think it's like the, you know, the boy who cried wolf, but basically uh, you know, they're, they're, just, they're, they're lost. And at this point, this uh, is when Shelby is like, I need to get the hell out of here. And she jumps into the car. Smart move. She just calmly just leaves. She doesn't say anything to anybody. You see her in the car. She's just driving like, oh, dude, do 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 do. Getting out of here. Bye, everybody. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, the butcher will find out later. It's the butcher, played by Kathy Bates, stops her. Shelby. <laughs> 
But then Greg Shelby, after hitting the butcher and sees the butcher walk gingerly walk away after getting hit by a speeding car, she decides to chase her down and follow her into the woods. Now, I get it, you're trying to check on the person that you just might have hit, but uh, at a certain yeah. point, like, they're running away from you, you know, I don't know, I, I, I don't think I would... I, I, I would yeah. never I would never do any uh, type of hit and run. Uh, I, I would if, if anything happened, I would de definitely check on the person. But it's a little bit strange to then follow this mysterious woman um, into the woods and lo and behold, she stumbles upon some sort of human sacrifice. Very AHS fashion. She just at the very end of this episode, we get a human sacrifice and she's scared shitless with a guy who looks to be scalped running towards her. Welcome to the neighborhood, huh, Shelby? <laughs> Now let's jump into episode two, where Shelby, she's still at this ritual, and uh, she hasn't run off just yet, as we see uh, the origins, I guess, of the piggy man, where uh, they take a uh, the pig's tail, and the butcher just nails it straight to this dude's ass, uh, and then they put the head of a pig on top of him, and we get this, uh, this squeal, Kathy Bates, uh, just like always in American Horror Story. She's amazing here. Uh, I just love her energy right from the jump. Yep. Uh, I'm in, just in love with this character uh, immediately. Uh, with that said, you get quick glimpses of Lady Gaga's character as well. Um, this one is Scathich, uh, the witch. Um, and we're going to see her throughout this season. And uh, I, I thought it's, it's wonderful. It's so kooky, uh, but it plays so well for American Horror Story. Now, of course, the next day the cops come by and they check the area and there is nothing to be found. No evidence uh -huh. of this ritual that Shelby says that she saw. They even check her uh, her blood and find out if she's on any drugs. Um, she's completely clean. So everyone's kind of like WTF. Uh, what's going on here? You're you're basically calling us like every other day and you're saying all this stuff's happening. But there's literally no evidence. She doesn't want to leave. Apparently, she's changed her tune. We can't leave. Not when every cent we have is tied up in that house. If it was a fight they wanted, it was a fight they were going to get. Greg, I found I found this like extremely confusing to me because Shelby was so convinced. I mean, she literally took the car yep. keys and drove off the night before, right? Um, and now she's 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 sold that it's no more than oh. you know the neighbors screwing with them. She's not sold on. But she was so adamant before. I mean, the, the switch is flipped so quickly that it doesn't seem like this character would necessarily do this. Again, just like it's a horror trope. Now she's seen through the eyes of the <laughs> devil. She is like, you know what? I'm going to take him on head on or maybe something else is going on here and I'm just maybe losing it. Uh, either or, she sh probably should have left still. But uh, here we are and now we're back at the house the next day. And now we have new visitors. The last thing you want here is more people coming to this house. But unfortunately, Lee brings her daughter along for the ride. Now, Lee's daughter, Flora, makes herself at home very quickly. Another horror trope. Uh, we see the, the young child talking mm -hmm. to her imaginary friend, Priscilla. Um, and you know this is going to end badly for all parties involved. Um, uh, apparently, Priscilla wants her to help them stop the blood, stop the violence, stop what's going on. And in exchange, she wants to give Flora a bonnet. I know a nice oh. little, you know, the getup that she's wearing. Um, at, at this point, you know, you know, Lee just kind mm -hmm. of brushes it off to like, you know, just kids playing uh, and the imagination that they have. But we know better. It's American Horror Story. We know that that there's definitely some craziness going on here. Yeah, and of course, uh, for horror fans out there, you know, this is straight up out of the Amityville Horror, uh, where back there it was, I believe it was Chelsea who was talking to Jody um, at the time. Jody, there's no one here. See, you scared her. She went out the window. And then speaking of that movie, just look at the Roanoke house. It is straight up, uh, almost like a, like just identical. It's like a bigger brother to uh, the Amityville Horror House. I love it. Uh, yeah. Except for like the, the, the giant windows. Yes, it's also Amityville Horror, but I always, always think of Alex Proyas, who, you know, the director of The Crow, Dark City. He would always utilize those giant windows. Uh, we talked about on the Twilight Zone breakdowns, but I, I love them yeah. whenever a director... Uh, or just, you know, production crew uses those windows, and they utilize them a lot throughout this season, and it's just always beautiful shots. 
So all this bonnet talk, you know, Lee's just like, uh, whatever, you're a silly little girl. But then, like, she is interrupted by, a, you know, a crash in the other room and broken shattered glass. And there's literally a bonnet sitting in the room. Uh-oh. <laughs> now, later that night, Matt and Shelby hear more noises. They head out into the woods where they find that giant Blair Witch-like totem. It's on fire. Um, it's with Piggy Man remains are all over it. And so the, the, the police are there this time. They have evidence at this point. They know something's going on here. But again, you got to chalk it up to the Polk family. So out of all that, they're able to get at least uh, one on-duty cop to stay there overnight. Uh, so that, I guess that helps. That's more than uh, nothing. And so now they can finally get some rest. At least, uh, at least they thought they could. Um, and, but Greg, when they when the cops only leave one one cop waiting there, that's, that's not enough. This no. happens in every every no. horror movie. You need you need you need like a whole force to help you out here. Uh, yeah. At this point, you need the Avengers because uh, immediately <laughs> you get a phone call. Matt picks up the line and he hears someone you know shouting or ask, asking for help gasping for help over the line and he checks the phone line of course and dun 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 there it's not connected to the wall uh okay so he puts the phone down and then he walks out and sees of course uh, that same voice uh, it's an old woman, and he's just now he thinks he's completely just lost it, or he thinks he's just seeing visions uh, as he sees two nurses and uh, two uh, these sisters who are taking care of a patient. Uh, the patient, although I guess is getting a little too uppity for their their standards, and they mm -hmm. take out a gun and they put one through her head. <laughs> Now, homicidal nurses have uh, popped up in AHS in the past, uh, although these two are actually inspired by real life events. Now, in 1986, Gwendolyn Graham and Catherine Wood met while working at the Alpine Manor Nursing Home. Now, in AHS, the two were sisters, but uh, in real life, they were lovers. Apparently, Wood admitted to serving as lookout while Graham smothered the patients, and they attempted to spell out murder uh, with the first letter of their victims' names. But that ended when one of the patients were able to fight back. Um, now, they were arrested in December of 1988, and Graham was sentenced to life in prison while Wood was just released, uh, I believe, this year. Wow. Now, Matt doesn't know what he's seen. You know, he thinks it might just all be in his head, uh, maybe a mm -hmm. result from uh, the, a consequence of when he got hit in the head. He obviously was in a coma for a bit in a while. He's dealing with some physical and mental things going on after such a traumatic experience there. So he doesn't really trust his own um, judgment on this. You know, he doesn't know, whereas mm -hmm. like he needs to, he needs to really see it and, and, and have other people see it for themselves in order to kind of trust what he sees. He, he kind of doesn't know what to expect and what to really believe in. Um, as opposed to, you know, Shelby's going through her own stuff as well. Now, this is kind of, uh, we see in Matt's, in Matt's perspective, when on uh, what he's going through. Yep, he thinks it's, it's so bonkers, there's no way it could possibly be real. Um, so sure enough, everything's gone too in the room, so he, he just thinks it's all in his head. Now the next day, Mason, uh, Lee's ex-husband, comes over to pick up Flora. Uh, Flora's playing a game of hide-and-seek. Uh, apparently she plays it all the time with the two of them. Now they find her upstairs in a little room, and uh, this is where we hear stuff about her, her imaginary friend again. Unfortunately, her imaginary friend told her this time uh, something a little, a little, a little dark. <laughs> You're going to kill us all. You save me for last. So Mason is like, okay, we're getting the hell out of here. He grabs his daughter and says, basically, um, you know, he doesn't want her around this whole situation. Who knows if it's yep. just like scary stories that are being told to her, or if it's just the creepy. Uh, Roanoke House itself, uh, or Lee is not being a responsible parent. He basically just wants to um, get his daughter away from the whole situation. And mm -hmm. Lee, Lee kind of spirals out of control after this, right? You know, it's already tough enough um, being away from her child, um, doesn't have full custody, um, and now, uh, you know, starts drinking again, basically. Demon in the bottle. Um, and on top of that, when Matt and Shelby go to see her, there are uh, sh someone has been throwing knives uh, on the ceiling, has been sticking knives to the ceiling at this point. And of course, you would think it's Lee, even though Lee says, I didn't do it. And the audience, of course, is probably thinking, yeah, she didn't do that. Um, unfortunately, uh, Matt and Shelby, if you're in the AHS universe, they think it's Lee and uh, they just chalk it up to alcohol. Now, Shelby and Matt are hanging out, and they look outside, and they see it uh, looks like a child um, in the woods. Um, you know, they see it for a second, then it disappears. They go outside to check, 
and they're looking around the woods and they can't find anything, but they do stumble across, which is kind of surprising. They haven't like looked over the whole property yet, but they find a storm cellar, a door to like an underground bunker, underground basement. Um, you know, there are you know, tornadoes, hurricanes in the area, so this is n a normal mm -hmm. thing to have in, in this situation. And they go down there alone without any without any any cops help they go uh, down there and they course. check in yeah of course and they find fingerprints everywhere <laughs> good good job everybody <laughs> and they go down there and they find some more video footage some found footage from dr cunningham elias cunningham played by dennis o'hare again um and this gives even more backstory and more kind of context into what is going on specifically within the roanoke house now he was doing a research on the nurses apparently at the time uh as the nurses they bought that house the roanoke house where they were it turned into a nursing home which is pretty much just a murder house uh, on itself where they were trying to spell out murder just like the uh real life uh women who did it yeah. now um while doing this though they didn't get to r they didn't reach the end here he discovered that something more evil took over before they could get there. And this is where we see the butcher, like a quick frame, a quick shot of the butcher in his Blair Witch, like uh, again, uh, camera, uh, like uh, made at home camera footage uh, from the doctor where it ends, so we're just static after we see a shot of the butcher and then we get a shot of uh, then uh, that cleaver at the front door, damn. We wanted out. We wanted our money back. We wanted our lives back. Yeah, and uh, immediately after watching this, you know, then Matt and Shelby are like, okay, we need to, we need to leave. Like, this is crazy. Yes. Like, uh, yeah. you know, they've seen a lot. You know, the video really helps them kind of solidify their, their theories and their feelings on what they've been experiencing, right? And, mm -hmm. and they, they're, now they're getting closer and closer to believing what they are hearing and seeing in these, in these videotapes as well. So they find like, the words written on the board. They also find yeah. the words written on the wall too. So they want to yeah. get out. <laughs> yeah, they, they they peel back the uh, you know the wallpaper and find murd. Uh, they don't find the whole thing there, obviously, because they were stopped. So um, you know when when you see the physical evidence, then mixed in with all these stories that they've been listening to on the on the videotape, now they're sold that they need to get the hell out of there. But the problem is that literally, like they say their entire life savings is tied up in this house. You can't really get out of it. So you're kind of stuck here. I mean, you can leave, um, but what do you do? Uh, uh, everything you own is here. I, guess, I, I don't know. I guess maybe I need some more uh, background on this uh, in real life because I have a feeling, I'm, I'm just saying, if this all transpired and you find blood or something written on the wall that spells <laughs> out murder, uh, and this was nothing and nothing they found, and they, yeah, they find out from the bank they changed the address so they couldn't even look half of this up, I feel like you could take this to court, but you know, the state they're in, who knows? I'm just gonna say that they probably could have got out of this with their money back at some point, but I uh, let's just say that, okay, maybe, maybe they couldn't, and so they have to stick around, I guess, a little bit longer. Yeah, I'm with you, Greg. I mean, at this point, I would even take half of my money and bounce. I don't, I don't care. You can keep half of it, yeah. I'm, I'm leaving. Um, there has to be some type of legal uh, work around here. Um, but yeah, they're, they're pretty much screwed and they have to just stay put. Um, and then quickly, the next, uh, we see uh, Lee uh, drives back, back to the Roanoke house, but she has Flora with her in the car and um, obviously illegal, um, breaking her- Kidnapping. Yeah, can't, can't be doing this. <laughs> they know that basically she's broken the law, she's been drinking, um, Lee's completely unstable at this point and uh, should not be doing this. No, 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 Mason, please don't involve them. Well, you don't want Flora to have to see her mother dealing with the police. It wasn't malicious. She just wanted to see her daughter. But Shelby helps her out. She actually calms down Mason, lets him know that Flora's fine. She's at the house and come on over and pick her up. You don't have to get the police involved. Yep. Um, so again, everything's good and normal here. Unfortunately, Flora, she gets the calling from Priscilla and she heads outside. And you knew this was bad news the second um, that you know she was talking to her imaginary mm -hmm. friend Priscilla, who doesn't seem so imaginary at this point. Um, yeah, they go outside. They can't find Flora. This is every parent's worst nightmare, obviously. Um, and they look everywhere. And uh, Greg, this is this is a literal cliffhanger. Well, a a tree hanger, a pine tree hanger. They see basically her <laughs> hoodie on the top of the tallest pine tree in the world. Uh, and they can't find, uh, you know, where Flora went. They have no idea where she went. So um, what a horrible, horrible way to end uh, this, this episode.
Okay, everyone, that's it for us over here. Happy Halloween, and we'll be back here next week for episodes three and four. Happy Halloween, guys. I'm going to be Piggy Man for Halloween. What about you, Greg? I'm going to be a guy in a mask trying not to catch Rona. How about that? Even better. See you guys. Mm -hmm. Stay safe. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>